Hello and welcome back to No BS. Today we return to talking about the ongoing presidential election and campaigns going on here in the United States of America. More specifically, we're talking about Joe Biden. He's the current presumptive Democratic nominee, and we really haven't seen much from the guy lately at all. In fact, it's been 82 days since he's had a press conference and taken questions in public, which is rather odd for someone running for president in the biggest and greatest country in the world. In fact, it doesn't really make sense at all unless you consider the fact that Joe Biden is just old and frail and falling apart. And basically his campaign is trying to hide him from the public because anytime he's in public, anytime he's speaking and given too much chance to talk and ramble, he just ruins things and makes himself look worse. Biden is falling apart and that's why they're keeping him on lockdown. And it really kind of contradicts what Trump and his campaign has been doing. Trump has been doing press conferences almost every week, almost every day during the pandemic. Him or his press secretary have been killing it, responding to all kinds of questions. And in addition, Trump even had his first rally since the pandemic, which happened last weekend. It went extremely well. Trump was up on stage speaking for over two hours. Now, think about that for a minute. Not just was he excited and well-spoken and giving a great performance, almost like a stand-up comedy night, like he had some jokes in there. He had some great political points. Like It was a great show, and Trump was standing up through all of it. He did two hours speaking really excitedly, really effectively, all while standing, and he did it in front of thousands of fans, thousands of supporters. Now, contrast that with Joe Biden, who hasn't spoken publicly or done a press conference in 80 days, 80 plus days. And in addition, we've seen some of his gatherings that have been rather sparse, like very few people are showing up to Joe Biden stuff. Like he is not someone who excites many people at all. So that's why we're talking about this. That's why we're interested in what's going on. And we're kind of curious if they're going to really make it. Now, there have been a few other developments. The Democrats did agree to some sort of debate plan. There's going to be three debates between Trump and Biden leading up to the election. But that's pretty standard. We all expected that. What's more surprising is he hasn't spoken out and come out and done any press conference in so long. I mean, that's a long time for a politician, especially when you're running for president. But for more details, we're going to look at some tweets and some people talking about this. For example, this first one comes from Kirk. It says, Joe Biden hasn't held a press conference in 82 days. Why is he refusing to go in front of a camera and condemn the violent riots that are tearing down America? Does he support destroying statues of Washington, Lincoln, and Roosevelt? What about desecration of churches? Now, these are all great questions, really well put. And I think it's something that should be held up against Biden. I mean, why isn't he condemning all this craziness? There's a lot of bad things happening in the country. And the leftists just kind of want to let it happen. They want to let these protesters and demonstrators kind of run amok because they're part of their base, their supporters. I mean, they can't speak out against them or they'll be called racist or something. And that's really a bad sign when your leader, your president, isn't about law and order, isn't about like enforcing the law of the land and stopping these criminals from destroying our statues, destroying our history, taking down these presidential statues you see here. And also now they're coming after churches, which is the next step. And it's just a really scary time. And Joe Biden isn't being that supportive figure. He's not being a proper candidate. All he has and all he has going on is going after Trump. And he's trying to blame it on Trump. And he calls him racist and says, we need a leader who acts. And it just mostly doesn't make sense. It's a really weird kind of strategy. And it makes people think it's like, where is this going? Where is Biden? Why isn't he speaking? And why aren't we hearing from this other candidate? Statues of Jesus are next. It won't end. Pray for the USA. The mayor of Seattle has just announced they will dismantle the chop zone. It took someone getting murdered for them to do this. Yeah, that's how far things have gone on the left. Like, they really don't want to act. They don't want to speak out. They don't want to get involved. Like, they just don't care about this violence because they want this kind of destruction to kind of destabilize our country. Next, I'm doing a search of Joe Biden on Twitter, and this gives us some pretty interesting tweets. A lot of people talking about how he hasn't spoken in public. Uh, here, Donald Trump Jr. is also speaking about the the statues that went down, the Catholic saint statues. Does Joe support this lawlessness? You can see there's been some coordination. These guys know what's up, and they know how to spread a story. And I think it's interesting. Like It is 
valid questions like Joe Biden should be held to task. Like, what is his take on all this bad stuff? Next, Brad Parscale, Trump's campaign manager, says it's been 82 days since Joe Biden held a press conference. Hashtag hide in Biden. Eric Trump says something similar. Today is day 82 since Joe Biden held a news conference. Moreover, yesterday his campaign denied extra debates. They have this guy locked in a cave as they know he has zero enthusiasm. And when he does have a mic, it's his own worst enemy. That's right. So we're talking about Biden. We're talking about a lot of duff ups he's had on camera. He's misspeaking. Honestly, like I just saw this ad for him today on YouTube and he couldn't even get the first sentence out right. And it's an ad that they paid for and they recorded and he was like misspeaking the whole part. He's like, he's saying like, I have something to, he's trying to say, I have something to ask of you. And he ends up flipping the words and it's like, I have to ask of you something like he just totally messes it up and just messes up the language. And I understand that. Like I'm a public speaker sometimes too. Like I record a lot of videos. I'm not perfect. I'm far from perfect. Like I have a lot of mistakes still, even through editing and kind of re-recording stuff. But that's the real point is if you have that bad a mistake, if you're putting something out there to the public, they should have the time and re-edit it and reshoot it. I mean, this guy's running a presidential campaign. It's not some rinky dink YouTube channel. Like we're not just talking about some video about South Park or Star Wars or some t Trump politics. Like I'm just having fun here. I'm just talking about the news and this guy's running for president and he can't even get his ads right. And this reflects in his live streams too, his sorts of interview setups that all come from this office that looks like it's like in one of his basements or something. It's a really bad, bad look for him. Here's Joe Biden tweeting, which a Twitter account I'm sure he's not even in charge of, but Regardless, he says, this is yet another attempt to distract from the administration's failure to lead an effective response to COVID. Immigrants help grow our economy and create jobs. The president can't scapegoat his way out of this crisis. So again, this is all I've ever seen from Biden lately. Just blaming the president. Trump's fault. This virus is his fault. These riots are his fault. But really, it's like you're just blaming everything on the president. You're just being this kind of weak, kind of just cheap insult. It's like, it doesn't make any sense. The Trump didn't cause the virus. The Trump, the Donald didn't cause all these riots. Like he's dealing with the problems. He's the garbage man. He's the kind of guy you call when there's an issue. So you can't blame the issue on him, which is what Biden seems to do. And it seems to be just like his go-to tactic. And it's not like the worst thing. Like a lot of people can rally behind hating on a opposing candidate, but for me, it just looks ridiculous. And then also, if you look at Joe Biden, I just can't really take him seriously. He's got this picture, this profile picture, like, look at him. What the heck is going on here? Like his ears all bent. The mask is all crooked. Like this is just an obvious virtue signal too. Like he's trying to say, Hey, I'm wearing a mask. I'm cool. You know, like, like I'm, I'm scared of the virus too, guys. We have to stay safe. And he's just trying to like virtue signal with the mask, like giving in to the whole idea. And you know, not that like wearing a mask is some kind of like tinfoil hat thing like we're not saying that but there's definitely an angle here where the media is overhyping it and they want it to seem like more dangerous out there especially when people are doing things they don't like like when trump has a rally they scare everyone and act like the virus is going to kill everyone but then when there's a protest they just say that's okay everyone go to the protest that's good yeah even the health experts say oh make sure you stay home unless you're protesting protesting's fine you know if you're doing the liberal thing that's fine but if you're doing something conservative even the wrong protest you can get attacked and it just goes to show how ridiculous this whole cycle's coming this person has a good response you can't stay in your basement and criticize the president for keeping immigrants out of our country while dealing with the pandemic so yeah people are realizing that he's just just some guy in the basement hiding trying to snipe at Trump. Trump's the one doing the real work. Trump's the one out and about traveling, you know, visiting his constituents. And Biden is just banking on being a Democrat and getting all the liberal votes, you know, like he just thinks that his votes are just going to be good. He thinks it's got it locked down. And that's why I think it could be 2016 all over again. If these guys don't really step it up and get some kind of good campaign going, like Biden's just going to be the sleeper candidate. It's going to be like a real, real bad loss for them. So this is an event that was just announced. It says they will hold a community pride pre-recorded event Wednesday evening featuring the Billy Porter and Queer Eyes, JVN, among others. So some kind of crazy pandering alphabet thing. A lot of alphabets there pre-recorded to not a press conference, not taking questions, 
not talking about the real issues, just pandering to gay people and people wearing dresses and stuff like that, cross-dressers. Your dad is no match for Joe Biden. Your dad has no domestic policy, no jobs policy. Trump, are you kidding me? This guy's talking to Eric Trump, Trump's son. Trump had like the highest jobs ever. Like Trump has been killing it until this whole virus thing happened and derailed everything. Like we were on top. And that's why it's just ridiculous to see Joe Biden trying to act like he doesn't have dementia and some sort of terrible past. He said negative things in the past about other races. He panders to black people, even though he thinks they're beneath him. And then on top of that, he's hiding and trying to pretend, you know, oh, Trump can't do anything right. Trump is the one actually helping and saving the country. Biden's the one hiding in his basement who can't even put a mask on right. And he's having other people run his Twitter account. That about wraps things up. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Make sure you comment your thoughts on everything below. Also hit that like button to help this thing get shared. And until next time, have a great day.